Hello everyone. I warmly welcome you to our program today. The program focused on African women's health. This is a program that is committed to promotion of African women's health at home and abroad. We share the global message of health for all, and we continue to emphasize that African women must not be left behind in optimal health. My name is Dr. Laidi Ogushiji of the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Western Sydney University, Sydney, Australia. Last week, we focused on sexual violence or sexual abuse. And the plan for today is for us to um, start our conversation on an important topic, oral health. And you'll find out that this week and next week, we'll be talking about issues that surround oral health. So straightforward, let's start by asking the question, what is oral health? World Health Organization attempted to provide us with a definition. And they said that oral health is a state of being free from a number of things. Some of these are, has to do with chronic mouth and, and facial pain, oral and throat cancer, oral infection and sores, gum disease, tooth decay, tooth loss, and other diseases and disorders that limit an individual's capacity in biting, in chewing, smiling, speaking, and psychosocial well-being. So oral health, according to World Health Organization, is the state of being free from all those um, factors and issues that I've enumerated. Oral health is a key indicator of overall health, well-being, and quality of life. The disease are the common non-communicable diseases. That is, when you are looking at communicable diseases and non-communicable diseases, you find out that oral diseases are the most common non-communicable diseases which affect people throughout lifetime. It causes pain discomfort and disfigurement and even death. The Global Burden of Disease Study 2016 actually estimated that oral diseases affected half of the world's population with tooth decay in permanent teeth being, uh, with tooth decay in a permanent um, teeth in the mouth, permanent teeth being the most prevalent condition assessed. So when we look at the global uh, population of 7 billion plus, the World Burden of Disease Study of 2016 reported that half or the people in the world then had issues with tooth decay in permanent teeth. That particular study also recorded that severe gum disease which may result in tooth loss, was estimated to be the 11th most prevalent disease globally. And severe loss and no natural teeth was one of the leading 10 causes of years lived with disability in some high-income countries. As a matter of fact, dental treatment is reported to be costly, costing as high as 5% of total health expenditure and 20% of out-of-pocket health uh, spending in most high-income countries. The horror health care demands, are be, many of whom are most of the time, are beyond the capacities of the health care system in many low um, and medium income, income uh, um, economies. Oral health inequalities actually exist among and um, between different population groups around the world and throughout the entire life course. You may be wondering what are some of the risk factors, behavioral risk factors for oral health and oral health issues. It's not far from other non-communicable um, diseases, other major non-communicable diseases like cardiovascular disease and diabetes. And that is why next week I'll be bringing um, you know, somebody to come onto the onto our program to come and give some more depth into the issues of oral health and other non-communicable uh, disease. 
please stay tuned for next week. That person is going to, is going to come. Poor oral hygiene and inadequate exposure to fluoride have negative effects on oral health. You may be wondering, what are some of the types of oral diseases? There are different types of oral diseases, and these include tooth decay, gum diseases, tooth loss, oral cancers, oral manifestation of HIV, and injury around the face and mouth. How can we prevent oral health issues or oral health or oral diseases? Number one, it can be prevented through promotion of um, a well-balanced diet, through consumption, promotion of consumption of well-balanced diets. It can be prevented by reducing smoking and alcohol consumption, by encouraging the use of protective equipment when you know, traveling or when participating in, in sporting activities that have the tendency of causing injury to the um, oral uh, cavity. It can be provided, it can also be prevented by practicing twice daily tooth brushing with fluoride um, containing toothpaste. Inadequate exposure to fluoride can cause um oral health issues so in essence making oneself available to the use of fluoride loaded or fluoride containing toothpaste have the tendency of preventing oral health issues tooth decay can be likely prevented by maintaining a constant low level of fluoride in the oral cavity so when when there is a constant uh, supply of um, fluoride, no matter how small, no matter how it may be, it has a tendency of reducing oral health issues. Communities and countries with inappropriate exposure to fluoride are particularly at a higher risk of tooth decay and settings with poor access to sanitary um, system or safe water have further vulnerability towards oral health issues. Moreover, control of oral disease actually depends on availability and accessibility of oral health systems. Uh, but reduction of risk to disease is only possible if services are orientated towards primary health care and prevention. So as we begin to conclude our program um, today, um, what we like to say is that public health solutions for oral health issues are most effective when they are integrated with those for other non-communicable diseases and with national public health programs. And that will be it for me for today. Don't forget that I said that next week I'm going to bring somebody who is doing some work along that area to come and share some light especially on the issues of um, oral health and how this relates to other non-communicable diseases such as diabetes and cardiovascular disease. In case you are wondering who you are watching, my name is Dr. Laide Obushiji of the School of Nursing and Midwifery, Western Sydney University, Sydney, Australia. Thank you so much for being part of the program today and I look forward to seeing you next week. And until then, thank you.